All right, welcome back to lesson one of our GLSL and POP series. So for this one, uh, I wanted to first start with a motivational example and kind of a cool technique that I don't think you can use uh, really without GLSL in POPs. It might be possible, but it would be much more involved. Uh, and that's attribute blur. So we'll get into all of that in just a second. First, uh, for those of you who are joining, my name is Lake Heckeman. I'm a new media artist. I'm based in Brooklyn. I create interactive installations to explore interpersonal connection and human perception, and specifically how technology can change those things and how it is changing them each day as we move forward into this brave unknown. Uh, here's some past work that I've created using GLSL. Um, some of these are also using POPs. So just a little bit of the bigger picture and kind of why the, the things that I'm showing you in this course can be very valuable. Now, I talked about this last lesson, but I wanted to mention it again. Why should we use GLSL in POPs and in Touch Designer? Generally, POPs are a really, really great new operator set and they really allow the expression of a lot more types of dynamics and systems, especially from a three-dimensional ge geometric perspective. That said, sometimes it's kind of hard to follow because there are a lot of different parameters. There's way more tabs and the logic that you're actually creating and the changes that you're making can sometimes be a little bit difficult to, to suss out. I personally find that scripting through GLSL really benefits me in POP specifically because it gives me a really nice readable script that tells me, okay, this is exactly what happens. This attribute is being used in this way to affect this, which is then used in that, and this ultimately is the result. I love that. It makes it a lot more reasonable and uh, efficient for me to go back and pick up projects where I left off, etc. So. I think that's one really great reason, and I just wanted to reiterate it, but the other is that you may also be able to complete some things that you wouldn't be able to do without using GLSL. And Attribute Blur is one of those examples. So you can see in this uh, video here, and also in the image on the side, what Attribute Blur can let you do. It really will take the attribute values of the neighboring points or primitives, whatever the geometry we're operating over is, and it will calculate the attribute value of each specific primitive by using its neighbors. That can let you do something like smooth some of the high frequency edges in this noisy shape and create a much more smooth organic shape. Uh, but it can also let you do things like, let's say, break apart a sculpture. If we can propagate the attribute that tells the, the broken piece to do something, then we can have this really cool disintegration effect. And this I actually built myself uh, using the very same algorithm that we're going to be working on today. And last, there is this uh, other example that I wanted to show you, which is very similar. But again, just some more motivation for how this technique can be useful. So let's go back to our screen, and then we'll come to our last slide of the lecture series. It's gonna be, or sorry, last slide of the lecture for today. Gonna be a little bit shorter and more focused on TD. But I did wanna go through what the attribute blur algorithm actually does, some pseudocode for it, and a very, very trivial example. So the pseudocode, as I said, is find the neighboring geometry, whether that's points or primitives, uh, read in the attribute values, whatever attribute we are, are particularly interested in, and then use a function to calculate the current geometry's attribute based on the values of its neighbors. This can be either the minimum, the average, the maximum, or some completely bespoke um, distance-weighted parametric interpolation, like whatever. Um, so, as you can see on the right then, uh, is a very simple example, let's pretend we had a grid and our grid had points or quads that each had attributes. In this case, I just assigned some arbitrary values. And the point is, if we're calculating using attribute blur, the attribute value for the red quad, that value would be five if we were using the max operation. It would be negative one if we were using the min operation and it would be 1.1 if we were using the average. So all of those are obviously quite different and your specific use case will dictate the algorithm that you choose to use. So 
Uh, Touch Designer gives us a couple really handy operators that lets us do this and really enables it, makes it possible. So we're going to get into all of that on the Touch Designer side in just a second. I am going to end this video for non-subscribers, and if you're interested in following along further, please go subscribe on Patreon, and you can find this entire lecture as well as the project files available uh, for this. The rest of the courses in this, uh, or sorry, the rest of the lessons in this course, as well as my prior GLSL 101 for Touch Designer course, uh, and like dozens and dozens of other tutorials uh, that I've made. So go check it out there to continue following along. And for those of you that already do, thank you incredibly for your support. And let's jump into it.